Beneath the shimmering surface lurks a primal predator. Sharks, with their razor-sharp teeth and relentless hunting instincts, have terrified humans for centuries. But how often do these encounters turn deadly? Join us as we explore real-life stories of shark attacks, where the line between exploration and danger blurs instantly. Witness the harrowing moments when humans come face to face with these ocean giants and discover the will to survive against all odds. The air crackled with heat and humidity as Harper Ellis stepped off the small boat and onto the shores of Wolf Island. This isolated speck of land, a volcanic outcrop in the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, was her latest field research site. It was May 2003, a time of shimmering turquoise waters and a relentless sun. Harper was no ordinary tourist. A seasoned marine biologist, she was driven by a deep curiosity about the predators of the deep. Specifically, she was here to study the elusive and notoriously aggressive bull shark. These powerful creatures were drawn to the murky estuaries and channels surrounding the island, making it the perfect natural laboratory. This trip, though, was different. Harper was alone. A risky choice she felt was necessary for the work. For years, she'd documented shark behavior alongside a team. However, to truly understand these animals and push the boundaries of her research, she needed the freedom to work solo. It was reckless, perhaps, but the thrill of discovery outweighed the caution. Her equipment was meticulously laid out on the beach tagging gear, waterproof cameras, and a drone for aerial surveys. She'd spent months preparing her mind a whirlwind of data points and potential scenarios. Today was about observation. She planned to launch the drone to document shark activity in the shallows, a low-risk start to her solitary research. As she readied the drone, her senses were on high alert. She'd been in these waters countless times, but being alone shifted the dynamic entirely. The calm surface of the channel teemed with life, a reminder of the robust food chain she was about to intrude upon. Bull sharks were opportunistic hunters, their stocky bodies built for bursts of speed and ambush attacks. They were unpredictable and notoriously tolerant of murky conditions, precisely the environment she was about to enter. She donned her snorkeling gear and waded into the warm water. The drone hovered above, providing a bird's-eye view of the channel. Through the filtered sunlight, she could observe stingrays nestled in the sand and schools of fish glinting silver. But she sought a larger presence, a shark's sleek and unmistakable outline. The drone registered a flicker of movement in the distance, a shadowy shape cutting through the murky water. Harper's breath hitched. Was this her target? The shape grew more extensive as it moved closer and she felt excitement tempered by unease. Yes, it was a shark, a bull shark, its blunt snout and unmistakable silhouette confirming her suspicions. She came for this data and a chance to observe the creature in its natural habitat. The drone buzzed overhead and the shark seemed unfazed, continuing its channel patrol. Harper followed from a distance, keeping her movements slow and deliberate, her researcher's mind cataloging every detail of its behavior. Then, the shark shifted course, turning abruptly towards her. She froze. Had it sensed her presence? Bull sharks were known for their unpredictable behavior. Her heart thumped against her ribs as the massive creature closed the distance. It lunged, its powerful body slicing through the water in a blur of motion. Harper kicked back instinctively, her snorkel ripped from her mouth as she gasped for breath. The shark's jaws clamped down, missing her leg by inches. But the impact was brutal, knocking her off balance and sending a wave of searing pain through her arm. She clawed desperately, finding a handhold on the animal's rough skin and shoving it against its snout. Her marine biology training kicked in. She knew blunt force wouldn't deter a determined shark this size. The eyes were a bull shark's most vulnerable spot. She locked eyes with the predator, forcing herself to remain eerily still as she jabbed a finger towards its eye. The shark flinched, its grip momentarily loosening. It was enough. Harper twisted free, scrambling back towards the surface in a haze of adrenaline and panic. She could see the shore, but it was agonizingly far. The shark circled back, its dark eyes cold and unreadable. She expected another attack, a swift and brutal end to her research and her life. But instead, the shark veered away, disappearing back into the murky depths of the channel. Harper could barely comprehend the sudden retreat. Had her desperate attack indeed deterred it, or was it simply biding its time? 
She didn't wait to find out, swimming for shore with a desperation born of pure terror. Her arm throbbed with each pulse of pain, a reminder of the gaping tooth marks now etched into her flesh. As she stumbled onto the beach, gasping for air, the drone landed beside her, its tiny camera blinking innocently. Had it captured the attack? She didn't have the strength or the will to find out. All that mattered was the fact that she was alive. Collapsed in the sand, Harper allowed herself to tremble uncontrollably. Tears mingled with the salt water on her face, a release of terror and relief. Her solo expedition had taken a chilling turn. The encounter left her with a profound respect for the bull shark as a force of nature, and a bone-deep awareness of her utter vulnerability within its domain. She would analyze the drone footage later, looking for clues into the shark's behavior. But first, she had to deal with the immediate reality of her wound. The bleeding was finally lessening, but she needed proper medical attention. Somehow, she gathered the strength to send a distress signal from her satellite phone, then waited, watching the sun dip below the horizon. Rescue would come, but the image of those black, unreadable eyes would never leave her. Her research would continue, but never again with the same naive sense of security. She had looked into the eyes of a predator, and it had changed her forever. Liam Blackwood wasn't a man of superstition. Yet, as he gazed out at the turquoise shimmer of Palawan Bay, a flicker of unease danced in his gut. It had been a long morning. He and his partner, Anya Novak, had spent hours poring over charts and sonar readings, a mix of excitement and nerves thrumming under their skin. The dive computers were loaded and gear was meticulously checked. Still, the vast blue expanse of the Philippines' coast felt ominous today. With her cropped blonde hair and a spirit as unyielding as steel, Anya shrugged away his uncharacteristic mood. There was a glint in her hazel eyes. They both knew about the local tales, of a monstrous shark, a guardian of the reef, lurking in the unexplored depths of the bay. It was nothing but folklore, of course. With his lean frame hardened by countless dives and a cautious nature that went against his love of the ocean's depths, Liam couldn't shake off the strange foreboding but he'd faced fear before. It was an intrinsic part of his chosen life. The Palawan Islands were a diver's paradise. Pristine coral reefs teemed with life so vivid it felt otherworldly. Sharks were a common sight here. Sleek silhouettes, masters of their domain, added beauty and danger to this underwater realm. Yet what fueled the whispers wasn't an ordinary shark. Legend said it was colossal, a creature bearing the scars of battles few witnessed and survived. 2005 had been a year of change for Liam. Leaving the bustling coasts of England for the remote serenity of Southeast Asia hadn't been easy, but the allure of the unknown had proven too strong. His small but successful charter business thrived amidst the lush island setting. On this day, however, it wasn't leisure that drove them into the water. For months, the strange patterns on their sonar system had hinted at a hidden treasure. A vast network of underwater caves untouched and ripe for discovery. They'd nicknamed their target the Labyrinth. To Liam, it held the promise of a lifetime. To Anya, the thrill of pushing boundaries. With tanks strapped on and regulators secured, they descended. Sunlight dappled through the clear water, fading into dusky obscurity with each depth meter. They were experienced divers and their descent was measured and precise. Schooling fish darted aside like shimmering confetti, the familiar rhythm of the reef a comforting counterpoint to the thrill of anticipation. They reached the reef's edge, where the seabed fell into a gaping chasm. This was it. Anya gave the signal, her eyes dancing with excitement behind her mask. Liam responded automatically, a well-practiced nod, but his pulse throbbed faster. The entrance to the labyrinth was a mere crevice, barely large enough to allow them passage one at a time. Anya went first, her form disappearing into the gloom. Liam hesitated for a breath, the oppressive weight of water pressing down. In that moment of stillness, the bay, once so dazzling, felt alien. Then, with a decisive kick, he followed her into the darkness. His dive light pierced the gloom, a feeble weapon against the suffocating darkness. The cave system twisted and turned, forcing him to squeeze through spaces that threatened to trap him. Anya was a few meters ahead. Her rhythmic kicks were the only sign of life in this desolate place. Liam fought back a rising tide of unease. This was the wrong place where the ocean held its secrets close. 
Then the shadows moved. Not one, but several shapes materialized. Sleek, deadly forms circling them with chilling purpose. Reef sharks are a shiver of predators drawn to the disturbance. Liam's heart pounded, echoing in the enclosed space. His training kicked in. Stay calm, don't provoke, maintain eye contact. But the sharks were growing bolder. Their movements were fluid, testing their boundaries. Anya signaled for them to move back, inch by inch. Her eyes were wide behind her mask, mirroring his fear. One shark darted in, close enough to feel the rush of water as it passed. Liam reacted, kicking out and aiming his knife at the creature. It veered away, only to be replaced by another, its sharp teeth gleaming in the faint light. Desperation flared, hot and frantic, in Liam's chest. With a surge of terrible clarity, he realized they weren't just being observed but being herded. The sharks pushed them deeper into the labyrinth, cutting off their escape. Anya moved closer, their bodies almost touching as they tried vainly to present a unified front. The sharks closed in, their dark eyes relentless. It was a game of attrition now, and they were losing ground. Then, as if triggered by an unseen signal, the pack attacked. Liam found himself in the heart of a swirling, snapping frenzy. Teeth raked at him, tearing through his wetsuit. He lashed out with his knife, stabbing blindly, feeling a jolt of terrible satisfaction as he connected. But there were too many, their bodies whipping through the water like razor-strewn whips. Pain exploded in his leg. He screamed, the sound muffled by the regulator as teeth tore into his calf. Crimson bloomed in the water, a swirling invitation driving the sharks into a greater frenzy. Liam kicked and thrashed, his movements clumsy, hindered by the tight space. Through the haze of pain and fear, he saw his opening. A narrow slot in the cave wall, barely wide enough to squeeze through. With a surge of adrenaline-fueled strength, Liam lunged towards it, leaving a trail of blood in his wake. He clawed his way into the passage, scraping against a jagged rock. The sharks couldn't follow, but their fierce strikes at the entrance sent shockwaves through the water. He was trapped, injured, and slowly running out of air. His wounded leg throbbed in fiery protest, each movement sending fresh waves of pain through his body. Panic clawed at his throat, a primal terror threatening to consume him. Yet somewhere beneath the blind fear, his survival instinct fought back. He willed himself to think, to plan. The cave had to lead somewhere. He pressed onwards, ignoring the pain, driven by the desperate need to escape, to see sunlight again. The passage seemed endless, the crushing darkness broken only by the feeble beam of his torch. Bursting into a larger chamber, Liam found himself facing a vertical shaft. It rose towards the surface, sunlight filtering down like a lifeline. His heart pounded with renewed vigor. But how to climb? His injured leg was all but useless. He scanned the chamber, his eyes finally landing on the discarded remains of a previous expedition. A tangle of ropes lay half buried in the silt. With a cry of desperate triumph, Liam dragged himself over. Pain seared through him as he forced his trembling hands to knot the ropes, creating a makeshift ladder. Inch by agonizing inch, he hauled himself upwards. The light grew brighter, the promise of air intoxicating. His lungs screamed, his wounded leg a constant burning agony. He thought of Anya, a silent prayer for her survival, a flicker of guilt that he'd fled even as she fought. Breaking the surface was like being reborn. He gasped, the air sweet with life, and frantically scanned the water. Relief washed over him as he saw her clinging to a jutting rock, injured but alive. It took them hours, working through pain and exhaustion to reach the shore. Collapse claimed them when they felt the safety of solid ground beneath them. They had survived, broken, scarred but alive. The labyrinth had tried to claim them, but they had snatched their lives back from the clutches of the deep. The waters off Tikau Bay sparkled with a deceptive serenity. It was a dazzling sight, a deceptive one for Mia Sinclair. While the Philippines held a certain allure, the promise of tropical paradise, she knew the ocean could turn in a heartbeat. Here, the calm blues concealed a world of predators and hidden currents. Today, a sliver of unease gnawed at her, despite the gentle lapping of the waves against the dive boat. It was July 22, 2007. She'd been an avid snorkeler since childhood, a deep-rooted fascination drawing her to the world beneath the surface. But this was different. This was her first true open-water dive, a stepping stone into a realm that demanded respect, not just wonder. 
Beside her, her dive instructor, Thomas Rivera, ran through the safety checks. A weathered island native, Thomas inspired a mixture of trust and a twinge of nervousness. His gruff voice and heavily tattooed arms told of a long, intimate relationship with the ocean. Tiger sharks were the dominant predators here, sleek and powerful. They patrolled the reefs drawn in by the vibrant marine life, but attacks on humans were rare. Still, Mia couldn't shake the feeling of eyes watching from the blue depths. The island was wild, a speck of lush green rising from the sea. For her, it had been a refuge. A year earlier, a devastating loss had left her adrift, the emptiness threatening to consume her. The Philippines wasn't an escape. It was a desperate attempt to find a way back to life, to reconnect with the world beyond her grief. The descent was disorienting. Sunlight gave way to shimmering blue-green and the silence felt heavy. This wasn't the colorful, teeming world of shallow reefs. She focused on her breathing, the steady hiss of the regulator letting Thomas guide her deeper. The reef materialized from the gloom, a coral fortress rising from the ocean floor. Schooling fish darted aside like shimmering jewels, their movements hypnotic. For a fleeting moment, Mia's anxieties melted away. Then she saw it. The shark was enormous, easily 12 feet long, and its stripes starkly contrasted against the dusky water. It moved with a slow, menacing grace, utterly unlike the skittish reef denizens Mia was used to. This was an apex predator, an embodiment of the ocean's raw power. Her pulse hammered in her ears. Tomas squeezed her arm, a silent command to stay calm, but a ripple of apprehension ran through her. This wasn't fascination anymore. This was fear, pure and sharp. The shark circled, its dark eye fixed on them. Mia's mind raced, searching for a plan to escape. Tomas held up a hand, signaling her to stay still. Every instinct in her body screamed to flee, but she forced herself to obey. Then the impossible happened. The shark charged, not at Tomas, but at her. The time it was fractured. She saw the maw open, a cavern lined with gleaming teeth. A muffled scream tore from her throat as the creature struck. The world exploded into pain. Searing agony ripped through her shoulder and chest. She felt herself twisted and dragged through the water. The ocean turned crimson around her, the color of fear. She was going to die here. The realization wasn't an abstract thought, but a cold, brutal certainty. Then, fighting through the shock, a primal defiance ignited within her. She kicked and thrashed, her injured arm flailing. She would not become prey, not without a fight. The shark released her, momentarily startled by her defiance. Mia felt a rush of hope as Tomas grabbed her arm. Together, they kicked towards the reef, leaving a bloody trail in their wake. It felt like an eternity, each second fraught with terror. Mia's vision blurred, the pain threatening to consume her. She knew Thomas yelling, his voice rough and panicked, but the words didn't make sense. The shark returned, drawn by the blood in their movement. It lunged again, and Mia saw Thomas throw his body in front of hers. She saw him grapple with the massive beast and the water churning with violence that stole her breath. Somehow... Miraculously, Thomas shoved the shark away. Yelling and strong hands were pulling her upwards. Her vision narrowed and then darkness swept over her. She awoke on the boat, the pain a constant screaming presence. There was a rough bandage on her shoulder, blood seeping through, and a makeshift IV dripping fluids into her arm. Thomas's face hovered over her, etched with worry and a grim sort of triumph. She wasn't sure how they'd made it. It was a blur of blood and flashing teeth and the overwhelming urge to live. The shore seemed impossibly far away, but they were moving, the engine of the boat straining. There was a distant thrumming, the growing beat of helicopter rotors. Rescue was coming, a sliver of hope against the enormity of what she had endured. For a moment, the darkness threatened to pull her under again, but then a new feeling blossomed within her. Not just relief, but something fiercer, more potent. She had survived. Hours later, in the sterile confines of a hospital room, the full extent of her injuries became apparent. There were ragged wounds, torn muscles, and a lingering terror that wouldn't be easily excised. Yet there was something else there, too. A profound understanding of her strength. The ocean could be cruel, and she was forever scarred. But she had looked into the abyss and fought her way back. The Mia who emerged from that bloody encounter was not the broken woman who'd fled to those distant shores. She was forged in the survival fire, the girl who danced with a shark and lived to tell the tale.
The Florida Keys held a salty, sun-worn familiarity for Noah Cartwright. It was a humid summer morning, August 1st, 2009. His weathered hands gripped the wheel of his fishing boat, the Lucy Bell. She wasn't much to look at, but she was sturdy, bearing the marks of years spent battling sun and sea. For Noah, these waters weren't just a source of livelihood, but etched into his very being. He'd been a fisherman since he could walk. His dad, a burly man with a thick beard and a booming laugh, had taught him the ocean's currents, hidden reefs, and unspoken language. Years later, Noah was still on the water, making a modest living from the sea's bounty. It wasn't an easy life, but it was the only one he knew and cared for. This morning, however, a strange sense of unease prickled along his skin. The sky was clear, not a hint of storm, yet something felt off. Even the usual squabbling gulls seemed strangely subdued. Hammerheads were the sharks to fear in these waters. Powerful stalkers, their heads were flattened into that unmistakable T-shape. They weren't as large as some species, but they were fearless, often curious, and known to be aggressive. Noah scanned the horizon. He didn't crave adrenaline or confrontation, quite the opposite. But years of experience he had taught him to trust his instincts. Reaching under the helm, he pulled out a pair of well-used binoculars. Far off, near the edge of the reef drop-off, something significant was cruising the surface. A shiver ran down his spine. He nudged the throttle forward, the Lucy Bell churning through the choppy water. Even from a distance, the shape was unmistakable. Hammerhead, a big one. Noah's mouth tightened with apprehension. That thing could sink his boat or worse. He wasn't afraid. He'd faced down sharks before. But something about this creature, the sheer size of it, sent a jolt of unease through him. Noah's life hadn't been a steady tide. There was the year he'd nearly lost the boat in a storm and the slow months when catches were scarce. He'd weathered it all with quiet determination, the sea both his sanctuary and his adversary. But today, as he pulled alongside the giant shark, the vast indifference of the ocean pressed down upon him. He was small, vulnerable, and the shark? It was a reminder of the old untamed power of the deep. The hammerhead circled the boat, its dark eye cold and calculating. Noah tossed a chum bucket overboard, a desperate gamble to distract it. The water churned as the fish scraps caught the shark's attention, but the effect was short-lived. The creature fixated on the boat, and the man in it seemed uninterested in an easy meal. Noah's heart hammered against his ribs. He grabbed his harpoon, its weight a familiar comfort. It was a crude weapon against a predator this size, but better than nothing. The shark bumped the hull, a monstrous fish in a pool too small. The Lucy Bell shuddered under the impact and Noah stumbled. He needed to buy time to create distance. Revving the engine, he pushed the boat hard into reverse. The shark seemed startled momentarily, and he gained a few precious yards. Then, with terrifying speed, it powered forward, slashing at the stern. Half lifting from the water, the propeller screeched as the shark's head thrashed dangerously close. The boat lurched violently. Noah lost his footing, tumbling against the gunwale. Pain flared in his ribs as they slammed against the unforgiving metal. He saw the shark draw back, readying for another strike. He had mere seconds. In a move born of desperation and years of instinct, Noah didn't retreat. He lunged forward, the harpoon a lance in his hands. He felt the tip strike something solid and heard the roar of pain and fury from the shark. It thrashed, its hammer-like head slamming into the boat, rocking it side to side. A sickening crunch, a splinter of wood flying past his face. The shark had breached the flimsy hull. Water gushed in a frantic slap against his legs. Panic threatened to consume him, but he fought it back. The Lucy Bell was sinking, and the chaos and scent of blood still drew the enraged shark. He scrambled for the life raft, his movements clumsy with shock and pain. He saw a flash of gray, the shark's gaping maw lunging at him. He twisted away and felt teeth scrape his arm, a burning line of agony. Then he was in the water, the raft bobbing a few feet away. The Lucy Bell, his livelihood, was swallowed by the waves. The shark circled, injured but far from finished. Noah's world narrowed. It was just him, his flimsy raft, and the ancient, hungry creature below. The sun beat down relentlessly. Fear mingled with the taste of salt and blood in his mouth. Minutes he stretched into an eternity. Would rescue arrive in time? Would the shark tire of its sport? Or was he destined to disappear without a trace, another victim claimed by the indifferent sea? Then, in the distance, a speck against the horizon. 
a boat coming his way. He found his voice, a cracked yell for help. His relief was quickly tempered. The shark could hear him too. It charged one last furious attack. Noah scrambled onto the flimsy raft. The shark struck, its jaws snapping around the flimsy rubber and then it was gone. He watched, heart pounding as the shark dwindled into the vast blue. Rescue arrived soon after, hauling him into the safety of another vessel. He was battered and bleeding, his ordeal stark on his face. Yet in his eyes there was a flicker of defiant triumph. Against all odds, he had survived. The hammerhead may have gotten his boat, but it didn't get him. And for a seasoned fisherman like Noah, that was enough. The waters of Bimini Bay shimmered with a deceptive tranquility. For Chloe Dubois, this wasn't merely a beautiful location. It was a living canvas. The Bahamas were her studio, office, and sanctuary, with vibrant reefs and crystal clear waters. It was May 19, 2004, and the day had started as any other. Yet a flicker of unease lingered in her as she checked her camera gear. Was it just the early hour? Or was a more profound anticipation buzzing within her? Chloe wasn't one for superstitions. A marine photographer's life was a mix of luck and skill which she'd honed through years of dedication. Her childhood fascination with the ocean's mysteries had evolved into a career. It took her around the globe, capturing images that revealed a world most people never saw. Fear was a constant companion, yet it rarely held her back. Lemon sharks were common in these waters. They could be aggressive, but attacks on humans were rare. Still, there was a predatory sparkle in their eyes, a calculated intelligence that Chloe found both unnerving and thrilling. This morning, she had a particular shot in mind, not just images of the sharks, but their interactions with the teeming fish around the reef. It meant getting closer than usual, a dance at the edge of the predator's world. Her partner, Ben, bobbed next to her, his grin a mix of excitement and apprehension. They were a well-practiced team, bound by trust and a mutual love for the ocean. With a final gear check, she slipped beneath the surface. The sun's warmth faded, replaced by a cool blue embrace. The world of the reef unfolded before her in vivid detail. Darting fish swirling in shimmering clouds, the coral swaying with an unseen rhythm. And there, patrolling the fringe of this bustling ecosystem, were the sharks. Chloe's breath hitched in her throat. Their sleek forms were mesmerizing. She understood the terror they inspired in many, but it was mixed with an overwhelming sense of awe for her. She started to frame a shot, aware of Ben nearby. Her focus was intense. Years ago, a tragic accident had claimed her brother snatched away in a riptide she hadn't seen coming. It had forged in her a respect for the ocean's power and a fierce determination to conquer her fears. The camera became a shield, a way to channel her grief and love for the world that had taken so much. The first flicker of movement caught her eye. A lone shark was peeling off from the others, heading toward her. Her pulse quickened. Was it curiosity or something more? Chloe held her position, willing herself to stay calm. Ben, sensing the shift, moved closer, his body subtly tensing. The shark came on, its pace unhurried yet purposeful. Chloe raised her camera, fighting the instinct to retreat. Then everything happened in a terrifying flash. The shark lunged not with the clean strike of a feeding predator, but with a thrashing, violent burst of energy. Pain exploded in her leg. Her vision blurred as she was jerked violently underwater. Crimson swirled around her, obscuring her sight. The shark had clamped onto her calf, teeth tearing through flesh. The rush of water drowned out her muffled scream. She kicked and thrashed, but the shark held fast. Dimly, she saw Ben charging forward. He jabbed his spear gun at the shark, aiming to distract it but it seemed fixated on its prey. Chloe's world narrowed to the burning agony in her leg, the desperate struggle to stay conscious as her vision dimmed. Then with a jolt, the shark released her. She was tumbling, choking on seawater. Lungs screaming, she fought her way towards the surface. Strong hands grabbed her, hauling her upwards. She broke through the waterline, gasping for air. Ben's face was a mask of horror. Blood flowed freely from her mangled leg, staining the crystalline water a grotesque red. The other sharks, drawn by the commotion, circled in the distance. It wasn't over yet, she choked out, a wave of dizziness almost pulling her under. Ben hoisted her higher, yelling over the roar of his panicked breaths. The time he was blurred, movement, shouts, the rough feel of rope against her skin as Ben bodily hauled her into the shallows. 
The world tilted, the pain becoming an all-consuming blackness. She awoke with a jolt in a hospital bed. There was a persistent ringing in her ears, the sterile smell of antiseptic, the ache of her wounded leg. It took a moment for the fog to clear. The memory of teeth, blood, and the crushing pressure washed over her like a chilling tide. They were lucky. Passing fishermen had seen the attack, pulling them from the water moments before the sharks closed in. Ben was bruised but largely unhurt. Chloe's injuries, while severe, weren't life-threatening. Yet the trauma lingered. When she looked at the ocean the next day, it wasn't with the artist's eye but with the wary gaze of a survivor. The attack had taken something from her, not just flesh and blood, but a sliver of her carefree spirit. The ocean, once her playground, was now where danger lurked beneath the surface. But there was resilience forged within her, too. The ocean was still her passion, her calling. Weeks later, with her legs still mending, she tentatively picked up her camera. It was a cautious return, tinged with fear and a fierce determination. The scars, both visible and hidden, would never indeed fade. They were a reminder of the ocean's raw power and the price of venturing into its unpredictable depths. Yet Chloe Dubois refused to be chased from the world she loved. She would return to the water, her eyes a little wider, her heart a little warier, but her spirit unbroken. The waters of the Maldives pulsed with life, shimmering with an almost surreal clarity. It was April 18th, 2010. And for Mason Greystone, a day that started with promise held a tinge of restless energy. He adjusted his mask, the familiar weight of dive gear a comforting counterpoint to his unease. Oceanic white tips were infamous here. Sleek and formidable, they were the open ocean's opportunistic hunters. Attacks on humans were rare but not unheard of. And today, Mason was going it alone. His usual dive buddy, Sarah, was busy with work, leaving him alone to explore a remote section of the reef. He wasn't afraid. He trusted his skills honed over years in the water. But something about the vast expanse, the yawning depths, made his heart beat a little faster. It was a primal response, a reminder that he was a visitor in a realm beyond his complete understanding. Mason was different from most divers. He wasn't driven solely by the thrill of the underwater world. The loss had shaped him. A car accident five years ago had taken his wife and young son. Ever since, he'd chased a sense of freedom and escape that only the ocean could provide. Deep down, the risk was part of it. A way to feel the sting of life when everything else felt muted and distant. The descent was beautiful. Shoals of vibrant fish swirled past like living confetti. The reef rose from the seafloor, a fantastical fortress of coral. He checked his air, his dive computer ticking down the minutes. Everything seemed normal. Then he spotted it. The shark materialized out of the blue, sleek and powerful. It circled slowly, its black eye fixed on him. Mason felt a surge of excitement mixed with a flicker of primal fear. He watched as it drew closer, its movements both graceful and menacing. His mind raced. He knew the protocols. Stay calm, don't provoke, maintain eye contact. But alone, at this depth, he was acutely aware of his vulnerability. He was far from the surface and his air was dwindling with every breath. The shark moved faster than anticipated. It darted forward, a blur of gray against the blue. Mason reacted instinctively, kicking out and blocking the animal with his fins. There was a jarring impact and then a jolt of pain shot through his left leg. His heart hammered against his ribs. The shark had clamped onto his calf, its teeth tearing into his flesh. He lashed out blindly, his movements clumsy in the water. The world was a swirl of fear, pain, and the coppery taste of blood. He kicked, twisting to break the shark's grip, but it held fast. Panic threatened to consume him. His air was dwindling rapidly. He was being dragged deeper, away from the surface with no hope of rescue. His vision blurred as his lungs screamed for oxygen. Desperately, he reached for his dive knife. He fumbled, his fingers numb with cold and terror. The shark thrashed, dragging him further down. His thoughts became a whirlwind of fragmented images, his son's laughter, the glint of sunlight on water, and the space beside him where his wife used to be. With a last surge of strength, he brought the knife down. It struck the shark with a glancing blow, but the creature flinched. The pressure on his leg eased for a split second. It was enough. Mason pushed upwards, kicking away with all his remaining might. Then he was spiraling toward the surface. 
Lungs heaving, vision tunneling, he didn't care about the shark, about anything except the next breath. His hand broke through the surface and he gulped down sweet, life-giving air. He scanned the water wildly, but the shark was gone. He was alone, bobbing in the ocean, miles from any boat or shore. He checked his leg. Blood welled from ragged wounds, the salt water mingling with it in a stinging burn. The taste of copper was thick on his tongue. Fear morphed into icy determination. He inflated his dive vest, keeping himself afloat. Pain surged through his body with every kick, but he forced himself to keep moving. He willed himself to focus, ignore the creeping terror, and think of the one thing that mattered. Survival. The time he stretched into eternity. The sun beat down, his wounded leg throbbed in agony, and his air dwindled with alarming speed. He watched the horizon with desperate hope, willing a boat, any vessel, to appear. Then, like a mirage, a speck emerged against the vast blue. A boat. The sound of the engine drowned out his hoarse cry. Were they too far, would they see him? Hope flared, quickly followed by the cold pang of despair. But the boat changed course, heading directly for him. Rescue, against all odds, was coming. As they pulled him onto the deck, relief washed over him in a dizzying wave. He had survived. Hours later, in a hospital bed far from the open ocean, the full impact of his ordeal hit him. The pain was manageable now, and the blood loss was treated. But the psychological wounds, the fear, the brush with his mortality, would be with him long after the physical scars began to fade. The ocean, once his escape, was now tainted with a new, terrifying edge. Yet somewhere deep inside, a spark of determination still flickered. He knew he'd return to the water. But the next time, it would be with a more profound respect for the unforgiving nature of the deep.